It's time to talk about updates for one of our most mature products, UI for ASP.NET AJAX. UI for ASP.NET AJAX is a must-have for ASP.NET Web Forms development, featuring over 80 plus UI widgets and capable of running on any browser and any screen size. UI for AJAX utilizes HTML5 and CSS rendering for amazing performance. UI for AJAX's unique set of features allows you to create apps completely using server-side logic, client-side logic, or anywhere in between. In this release, we've continued to add more controls, themes, and features so you can ship faster. The latest update of the Theme Builder application allows you to create and customize themes based on the silk and glow skins. You can use them as a starting point to build your own custom skins and update their default color schemes per your project's design. Let's jump into the browser and see the Theme Builder in action. In my browser, I'm going to go to themebuilder.telerik.com and I'm going to select Create New Theme. And then I just need to give the theme a name and I'll hit enter and it will bring me down to my choice of skins to base the theme on. And I can choose Bootstrap or one of the new existing themes uh, like Silk. So let me choose Silk, get a little preview here. I like the way that looks. I'm going to go ahead and click on it and hit select all because I want all of the controls available in UI for ASP.NET AJAX and then I'm going to click Create. Now when the editor loads, I'll be able to change any of the colors or theme styles that exist in the entire UI control suite. I'm just going to do a quick base color for this demo, so I'm going to take this accent color and just paste in one of our progress uh, software colors that we use. And this is one of our purples that we use in our branding. And that, that looks good. You can see it's uh, proliferated through the entire set of controls that are available. And I can just hit download here and I'll get a nice zip file that I can use in my project. And just that easy, I've created a custom skin that works with my company's branding. And you can easily do that at themebuilder.telerik.com. Next, we have two new list controls, the checkbox list and the radio button list, each capable of binding to data using data sources or model binding, and support theming for seamless visual appearance throughout your application. Let's jump over to Visual Studio and see some code. So here I have a simple Telerik UI for ASP.NET AJAX Web Forms application. It's got a custom theme that I just created, and I want to add some uh, Brad radio button list items to it so users can select their favorite products. As you can see, I've already got my H1 tag here, select your favorite product, and now I want to add a Rad radio button list here. And I'm just going to copy and paste this guy in. I'm going to say Rad radio button list. And I'm going to give it the ID of questionnaire. And I've set auto post back to false. I don't want it to post back each time somebody clicks on one of the items, which is the default behavior. So inside of this rad radio button list, I'm going to declare some static list items. And each one of these is one of our Teller products. And you can see we just declare those with button list item. So if I go back over to the browser, you can see my radio button list is already rendered here. And I can just click and select an item from those list items. So here's where you can show some flexibility. For example, if your boss looks at the form and says, it's nice that people can select one item, but I'd rather them be able to select multiple items. What we can do is change the rad radio button list to a checkbox list very simply. Because the list items are the same, all we have to do is change the declaration here and say rad checkbox list. And so if we save that and go back to the browser, you see that refresh there. And now we have checkboxes instead of the radio buttons. Now let's go back into the code and let's add some model binding here. So model binding is a newer feature for ASP.NET Web Forms, and I wanted to show that we can support that as well. If I go up to where the checkbox list is declared, uh, we'll have another property in here called select method. 
and I'm going to say select method will be a method called get items. Now I haven't created this method yet. So we need to go over to our code behind and we'll create that method there. So I'm going to do this really simple for the demo, but we could go out to a database uh, in a full scale application. Uh, for the sake of the demo, I'll just return this as a method here. And I'll use one of the new language features of C Sharp called an expression bodied member to return a new list of button view model. And if I look at button list view model, it's just a simple plain old class object here that has a text and a selected property on it. And I'm going to bind those properties to the rad checkbox list. So to do that, let's just come back to a rad checkbox and we'll say data bindings. And then we'll give it a data text field. And we'll set that to text because that is what our class has. And we'll also set the selected field to that same selected property on our class. So you can see we have our data text in our selected field. Now we can close this tag off and go back to the browser and just refresh. And you can see that our checkbox list is built out and we have pre-selected one item just as I have right here in the method get items. So you can see this middle item here selected was set to true and that's been bound to this checkbox list on the form. Let's go ahead and exercise the API just a little bit and go back to the form and add a button that we can click on and we'll go through the checkbox list and pull out the selected items. So I've added a rad button to the form and I've also added a rad text box that we can use to log out the values from the selected checkbox items. So back to the code behind, let's just put a simple method in here. It captures the button click event. And you can see when the button's clicked, we're just going to go to the questionnaire and get the selected indices from it. And we'll go back to our form. And you can see I have select your favorite products. We can select a couple of these. Click submit. And there you can see we have the selected index of each of the items in the checkbox list. So there you have it, the new rad radio button list and checkbox list. You put those in your project today, just download the latest update from release three this year. In this release, we've added the new bullet chart and vertical box plot chart. This makes 22 unique chart types available for UI for Ajax. The bullet chart is a variation of the bar chart, which you can use as a replacement for dashboard gauges and meters. The vertical box plot is similar to the standard box plot and useful for comparing distributions between different sets of numerical data. In this release, the sales dashboard demo received a facelift. The sales dashboard now uses Bootstrap and is fully responsive. The app features a stunning design and utilizes many of our popular widgets, such as map, charts, calendar, date picker, and much more. So let's jump over to the browser and take a quick look. You can see I have my browser open to demos.telerik.com and I've navigated over to the new sales dashboard demo. And if you look at the dashboard, you can see we have some nice map controls here and we have some date pickers to select date ranges and we can drill down on some data here. We also have a nice team efficiency page that shows off uh, some additional controls that drive a master detail view. So here's a nice interactive type of application that could look similar to something that you might build. Now what's nice about the new sales dashboard demo is if I hit F12, I can pull up this, this emulator in Chrome and you can see if I set this to a Galaxy 5S or an iPad, for example, I can get a nice interactive view of how the application would look on that type of device. And you can see on an iPad here at 768 resolution, the UI for the application has been modified, so it looks nice on any device size. I can also come up here and click a Galaxy 5S, for example, and just refresh, and you can see this looks great on that small screen size as well.
So visit demos.telerk.com and check out the new sales dashboard. There's several more updates in this release, including the new spreadsheet features, Gantt editing options, and some diagramming improvements. The spreadsheet has been improved with the following new features. Hyperlink support has been added for cell content, multi-line editing has been enabled, and the ability to hide and show grid lines. This is useful when printing and exporting your spreadsheets. With the new Gantt options, you'll be able to precisely control editing options such as create, order, reorder, resize, and more. And the diagramming control now offers more options so you can customize the content size, font weight, style, and weight of connections and shapes. Among other features are client drag and drop events and the ability to find a connection point from the diagram canvas. For these demos and more, visit demos.teller.com and try them out yourself.